used. The spray has just finished its first year of widespread operation and the Police Complaints Authority has received more than 250 complaints. In its annual report, it says it's concerned about cases in which the use of CS has been neither justified nor appropriate. Last week, the spray was very publicly demonstrated when it was used on protesters at the inquiry into the death of Stephen Lawrence. So, are the police stepping out of line? Chris Choi reports. I personally experienced it. Uh, it is not pleasant initially. I wasn't threatening him. All I was doing was refusing to get out of the car. I got up and was restrained and CS sprayed, still with my daughter in my arms. I do believe that this aided my son's death. I personally believe that. Growing numbers claim CS spray has changed the way Britain is policed. Thousands of officers carry it and have enormous leeway on when to use a device officially classified as a weapon. Well, this is what it's all about. Just a small canister, yes, but it does pack a punch. Just a few squirts from this and your eyes will be streaming, you'll be left gasping for breath, and maybe you'd expect this to be used against hardened criminals and in life and death situations. But we found that it's been deployed against some of the most vulnerable people in Britain. People like 67-year-old Kenneth Whitaker from Bedford. He's crippled with back pain and has cancer. But this retired insurance executive was the target for a chemical first designed in the 1920s and used in cases of civil unrest and dangerous offenders. Well, my wife, every, every fortnight on that particular day of the week, she goes to a hairdresser's that she's frequented for the last 20, 30 years. We drove very slowly because I am retired and I'm out of the rat race, as it were. Because his disabled wife finds it hard to walk, he refused a police request to move from double yellow lines outside the hairdressers. And Mr Whitaker wouldn't leave his car either. The officer said he bared his knuckles and seemed threatening. And then I felt this sudden blow to my right eye. A real hard blow to my eye and I, I was blinded I, and I didn't know at that time that I'd been CS gassed. I didn't know that because I hadn't heard the man say that he was going to do that. But it was oh, uh, so unbelievably painful. What happened to Mr and Mrs Whitaker led to an assault charge against the officer, but he was acquitted, a verdict questioned by the judge. How can I threaten a man when I'm seated in my car with a seat belt on, I'm 67 years old, I, I, my, my body is in constant pain, uh, what, what threat am I to anybody? Almost all forces have now handed out the spray to patrols, Training sessions like this one on Merseyside show CS should be used in self-defence. Police demonstrations emphasise incapacitant spray as a response to extreme violence. But Heather Hudson was just two when she felt the terrifying effects of CS. She was neither armed nor dangerous. Two police officers intervened when her parents staged a protest in a Somerset benefits office. The local force won't comment until the Police Complaints Authority have investigated but the incident was captured on security cameras. Martin Hudson was found guilty of using insulting or threatening words or behaviour, but not of assault. His main concern was the effect on his daughter. To use it anywhere near children without a warning, uh, in a non-ventilated area, I think it's just disgraceful. I felt shocked and I, was, I wasn't actually sprayed. I, I mean, I can only say from what I've seen as her mother that the effect it's had on her, I don't know, you know, as she grows up, I'm sure she'll... That's going to be one of her earliest memories that sticks with her forever, that's for sure. On the beat with CS in London. Use of the spray is largely governed by guidelines from the organisation representing senior officers. They say the system works. We don't want to be a police force or a police service that seem to be violent towards members of the public who are aged or in some way not able to um, properly cope with them. Um, the violence has been perpetrated against them. So what about the pensioner on the double yellow lines? Well, really, I, I don't wish to comment on that particular case. But I mean, you've read it in the newspapers. Thing, isn't that kind of thing evidence? They're using the spray for convenience rather than out of necessity. Well, I can only reiterate um, that I have faith in the, in the British Police Service. The British Police Service does not indiscriminately use incapacitants. 
In the Pennine Hills of Hebden Bridge, we found a case which raises further doubts about CS and the guidelines that control its use. A distressed man jumped from this window. He landed 40 feet below on these stone cobbles. It's a case that highlights some of the dangers of a policing tool that officers have been keen to describe as remarkably safe. John Brennan and his partner Claire Kunzler. Three months ago, he became so psychologically disturbed, the emergency services were called. When John Brennan refused to cooperate, he was cornered in a third-floor bedroom. CS was sprayed at him. In the seconds that followed, he went through a glass pane and fell to the street below. The police told the ambulance people to go out because they were going to use CS gas. It all seemed very fast and very scary. John Brennan was left blind in one eye and with a shattered skull. Results of a police inquiry into the fall are due any day. I feel that uh, two able-bodied bodied men like them could quite easily have more safely taken me into an ambulance, even though I wouldn't have wanted to go in one. CS gas didn't have been used on me at all. On Humberside, we found a case where it's hard to believe CS guidelines were followed. 23-year-old Mark Bell, a hero in 1994 after preventing an armed robbery, he was the proud father of three, but there was another side to him. Depression, suicide attempts and trouble with the police culminating in a dramatic clash five weeks ago. They were certainly aware that he was suicidal. They knew that he'd left a mental hospital, a uh, mental ward on uh, Scunthorpe General Hospital. Once home, he locked himself in with his family. Within the preceding 48 hours, Mark Bell had damaged property and tried to kill himself. Medics asked the police to help return him to hospital. Mark's wife allowed the police access through this window. Four or five policemen entered the building and then went to look for Mark, who by that time had gone upstairs. Mark Bell went into the loft and refused to leave. After shouting up to him, the officers tore a hole in the hatch and sprayed CS into the enclosed space. No one went, went up there to check on my son at all, even though there was a deathly silence, no communication. Those concerns about police tactics are shared by one of Britain's most eminent toxic chemical specialists. Someone is in an enclosed area, they can't get away, they can't breathe in fresh air into their lungs, which is what they need to stop it hurting, and they're going to be very frightened. So you don't use it in an enclosed area. So in your view, not an acceptable police practice? No, it wouldn't be acceptable. And if you did spray into an enclosed area, you would have to go in straight away and get somebody out. And if you didn't do that, if there's a delay? Well, I think if there was a delay, then I don't know what that individual might do. Mark Bell was alone in this roof space. At first he responded to the police below, then all fell quiet, until a sergeant arrived and entered the loft. He found Mark Bell hanging dead from a makeshift noose. The Humberside force refused to comment on this use of CS, saying the matter is under investigation. The Association of Chief Police Officers wouldn't talk about individual cases, but its faith in the controls remains unshaken. The guidelines are quite clear. You don't leave people unsupervised after they've been sprayed by the incapacitant. But there's evidence that's what happened here. Only police and coroner's inquiries will discover the exact circumstances of a case which, with others, calls into question the safe use of CS. It seems to me that police are becoming trigger happy with CS spray, using it as a weapon instead of what it's supposed to be used for. And we are desperate as a family that this type of thing needs stopping, and it needs stopping now. Well, the P Police Complaints Authority says it'll continue to monitor complaints about CS spray with a view to undertaking more detailed research on the issue.